Thanks for tuning in. It's time again that I update you a little bit on how it is to live in Sweden. I'm here now for about four months and each month I like to update you on how it's going. Obviously we just moved so it's quite interesting to see where we are at and how we feel at the very beginning of moving to Sweden. So in this video I just want to give you a few updates, especially the first one is um, quite interesting what happened and at the end I also give you a little bit of an overview how I'm feeling living in Sweden and what it is like. So if you're new to my channel my name is Yuli and I'm originally from Germany. I lived in London UK for the past 10 years and then four months ago I moved to Sweden. Very close to Stockholm but not actually in Stockholm and more to that a little bit later. So here comes my first update. I got kicked out of Swedish class. I can't believe it. Just a few days ago, I got the message via email that I can't continue my Swedish studies. So we are at the very beginning again. I already attended probably three or four classes, so about a month every Saturday. But yeah, now it doesn't continue. And the reason is that I don't live in Stockholm. No, I don't live in Stockholm. I live in Nacka, which is kind of right next to Stockholm, but it is not Stockholm and that's where the whole problem lies. What I wonder though is that I did sign up with my current address here in Nacka and I got accepted and I started my course and then a month later they kind of decided or maybe discovered I'm not living in Stockholm and therefore can't continue my Swedish class. Obviously this feels a little bit like a setback. You know, I thought, yes, I sorted out my Swedish class. I started, you know, one step further into integrating myself into Swedish society. And now we are a step back again. Yeah, I already mentioned that a little bit in my previous videos. The bureaucracy here in Sweden is a bit of a labyrinth sometimes. And there is a lot of it as well. Even when you think you have sorted something, <laughs> you can't be certain for sure. So what I have to do now is to reapply, not in Stockholm, but in Nacka. But I already looked into it and my course, which actually takes place in Stockholm, is offered as well, but through the website of Nacka. So I basically have to reapply for the same course. I can actually attend the course, but the way I have to register for it is basically different. I think I registered on the Stockholm website for the course and I think that's probably my mistake here. And now I have to now go to the NACA website and apply for the same course. I'm still a little bit baffled about this and I can't quite believe it and find it a little bit ridiculous, but it is what it is. So I just have to do that and start from the beginning and I also don't know when I will be accepted. So it can take another week or month until I start my next Swedish course. I will keep you updated, of course. And another update is that I finally got my bank ID and my Swish, which feels really great because it's two things you really need here to get along. And actually one thing I didn't know, I need my bank ID to actually set up my business. I am still in the process of setting it up and I'm glad I have the bank ID because it just yeah, turned out I needed it. So again, I will make another video about setting up a business and I will mention it in there as well. But yeah, you need a bank ID. You need a personoma, you need an ID card, you need a bank ID to actually set up a business here in Sweden. And yeah, while I'm talking about bureaucratic things again here in Sweden, which is always part of my update, I think I want to give a word of advice because we again faced another obstacle, which is something sometimes so hard because you think you're sorting out things and then there's a next obstacle you have to sort out again. But from my experience is that it really depends whoever looks at your application is like the person who kind of has your fate in his hand. We feel sometimes quite lucky, you know, things work out for us. And then sometimes we feel quite unlucky because for some reason it's really hard sometimes to make it very logic to understand why we got rejected for certain things. 
Again, I also read a lot of stories from other experts and sometimes it's really not clear why certain applicants get rejected and why others are just accepted. And of course, it always depends on your background, but you know, personally, I always feel like we have sorted everything, we are behind everything, we provide all the details and still it sometimes doesn't work out for us and we get rejected as well. And from my experience, it really depends who's looking at your application. So my advice is try multiple times, try different sources if you can, when it comes to bank accounts, for example, try different banks, try different people in banks, because it is dependent on the person who really looks at it. It is possible that they're new, that they don't know the rules, even if they say, based on the law or paragraph X, Y, Z, we could not accept you. That's not really a reason because when you read it, you know, you can interpret it how you want it sometimes. It's not always so straightforward. Another example is that I wanted to pick up a package recently from PostNord and I asked the person, you know, I didn't have a number. I wanted to figure out if this package arrived and the person nearly sent me away I was a bit persistent and asked her a few questions. Then she got her supervisor to come and the supervisor straight away found the package, gave it to me. So that showed me again that it really depends who you face, who reads your stuff. It really depends who you talk to, to get things done. So that's the thing here in Sweden, which you kind of have to deal with. And I would say it's annoying, but it is what it is. And yeah, another update is, um, well, I made a proper video about it, but yeah, autumn has started here in Sweden and I kind of wanted to share you how I feel about it. And I don't know if you can hear it, but I still have a little cold. So this is my main kind of experience I had. I have this cold now for weeks, which is probably the longest cold I ever had. So I call it the Swedish cold, my first Swedish cold. It's not that, that pleasant. No, it's not COVID, it's just a cold. The main symptom is a runny nose and a stuffed nose. But yeah, I don't want to bore you with the details of my cold. It's just one side effect of autumn starting here in Sweden. But I'm really happy actually that it started. It feels very cozy and when the sun is out you actually don't even need a jumper so it's quite hot in the sun but yeah the leaves are changing it looks very pretty outside and i just like the fresh air in the morning as well and of course the temperature is still quite bearable it's about 12 13 degrees which is a nice jumper weather and we had some lovely sunny days in the past week so obviously that helps to just enjoy the autumn season. So an update about my social life here in Sweden. We actually celebrated our daughter's third birthday here at home. We invited a few friends. I know already two Swedish friends I met back in London and they moved back to Stockholm. So they came and visit. And then also some colleagues of my partner came to the party with their kids. So my daughter was really happy that there were a few kids around and obviously lots of balloons. So I feel like I have a little bit of a social life. It definitely helps, you know, seeing some people and having nice conversations. But yeah, I also met two people which I didn't know before I moved to Sweden. One is a mom from my daughter's kindergarten I met on the first day of introduction. So that's quite nice to have someone around this area to meet up with. And then I mentioned this already in a previous video, I used the app GoFriendly, which is particular for women here in Sweden to meet up, you know, with women, with, you can meet up with one, or there are some events there are uh, organizing, going out together and having drinks. It's for all kinds of women, so single ones or women with children or pregnant women. And so far, I really, really like it. I met one woman there, a British mom to be, and it's really nice to get to know other people here in Sweden and also, you know, talk about what it's like for them to live in Sweden, you know, move to Sweden and live here in Sweden for a while. So as you can see, I'm working on my social life here to get to know more people because for me, it's very important to have a social life and to, you know, integrate myself. Obviously, learning Swedish would help, <laughs> but luckily most 
of the people I meet here also speak perfectly English, which is such a great thing here in Sweden, I have to say. And last but not least, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a overview of what it has been like in the last four months living in Sweden. I would say in general, I'm really, really happy here so far, but the first months have been also quite difficult. I mean, when you move to a new country, it is kind of always difficult because what you really want is that everything goes smoothly, but that's a bit of wishful thinking. But especially with a kid, you want to get into a routine quickly just because it helps them to you know, cope with everything, with all those changes quicker. So far, I would say I'm happy, but I have my moments where you know I get disappointed or I'm just annoyed by another obstacle. So hopefully this will go away and the obstacles are not so frequent. And then also in general, I think Sweden is still very expensive. So I'm still trying to figure out how we can save a little bit of money. I'm trying online shopping with groceries now to see if we can control our consumption a little bit. Because when you go to the supermarket, you know, and you buy things kind of randomly, it can add up a lot. But it does help that I work from home mainly. And around this area, there's nothing really, you know, no cafes or anything where you can just pop over and, and grab a coffee or a lunch, which definitely helps to save some money. And overall, I'm still quite positive and I'm also quite exciting about the next month's coming even if it means it's winter and I know a lot of people warned me about the darkness but at the moment I still feel more excited than anxious about it obviously it will be my first winter so we will definitely see how I'm coping but I'm also liking the idea that you can cozy up at home with lots of candles and just you know, you know make it very comfortable for yourself so thanks so much for watching till the end I hope I will see you in my next video until then, have a great day and stay safe. Ado!